What is going on guys? Kyle here from White North Gaming bringing you guys a brand new series. Today I'm going to be starting a Seattle Kraken franchise mode. So as many of you know, um, Seattle will be getting an NHL team in the next two or three years I believe. Um, the name isn't decided yet, but right now the front runner is the Kraken and I love that name. So I decided that I would try and start my own franchise mode with Seattle and go through the expansion draft and kind of make it realistic to start and then just see where the series goes. Um, so before we get started, I'm going to go through the settings I'm playing on. So I'm going on pro difficulty. I've got injuries off just because I hate dealing with injuries. Screws with all the lines and it's annoying. We've got the franchise uh, mode set to 10 years. So we're going to try and do 10 years in the series. We've got fog of war on. So uh, players attributes are turned off unless the player is scouted. We've got auto scout on so that I don't need to go through and manage my scouts. And we've got auto staffing on, so I don't need to rehire coaches or scouts to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, we've switched Arizona from the Central Division into the Pacific. Sorry, no, we switched Arizona from the Pacific into the Central, and then we put Seattle into the Pacific, obviously the Western Conference. That way we can be uh, alongside Vancouver, which I think we're going to have a rivalry with. It makes sense because they're so close. And I mean, their baseball teams have rivalries, so I think it's a perfect fit for a rivalry. Um, just before we get started here, I'm just going to do a quick run through on what we're going to do in the video. So for starters, we're going to go and see where we end up in the draft lottery. Usually, uh, from the ones I've done, I end up between like 6 and 2. So we'll see where we end up. I'm hoping for a high pick because I know there's some studs in the draft. After that, we're going to do the expansion draft. Uh, we're going to pick what our team's going to be starting with. Then we're going to go through the actual draft itself. And then to end off the video, I'm probably going to show you guys our jerseys because I'm really excited about them. I think they look sick. And we might sim a game or two, but we might end it off there. We'll see where it takes us. So let's see where we end up in the draft lottery and let's get started. All right. I'm hoping for something good and it's not looking good at all. Where did we end up? Number six. Oh, that's too bad. We go from three to six. Not amazing, could be worse I guess, but I really wanted a top five pick, so that's too bad. Florida coming out as the draft lottery winners going from 14 to 1. That's pretty crazy. Even Minnesota at number 2, they jumped 12 to 2. Rangers 7 to 3, so this is a pretty crazy draft lottery. The teams that did bad kind of got screwed, including us. So that's kind of too bad, but uh, we'll hop into the draft later and... I might consider trading up if there's something on the board, but for now we'll sit with six and we're going to get into the expansion draft. So I'm going to go through and do the expansion draft and I'll see you guys on the other side. So we've now entered the draft. Now let's take a look at the draft class and see who's on the board. I think number one is Jack Hughes. Yeah, so Florida is going to be getting a stud in Jack Hughes, no doubt. Um, one year, or he's already NHL ready. Similar style to Miku Koivu. Glenn Lowry. So I think this is a NHL created player. Look at those stats. A plus, A plus, A, A, A minus, A minus. NHL ready and similar style to Timu Solani. So wow. This guy is going to be a stud too, I think. There's even a chance that he goes number one. My scouts got him ranked as number one. Central Scouting has them uh, two, and so does the previous one. So. They're probably going to go with Hughes, but I think uh, Minnesota is going to be getting a stud in Lowry. We've got Kirby Doc, Capo Caco, who's also going to be a stud. Bowen Byram as well. Now we go down to where we're at, which is sixth. So these are the players that should be on the board when we're up. By the looks of it, I'm probably going to end up going with Peyton Krebs, NHL ETAs, one year, which is pretty solid. Top six forward, should have pretty high potential. Uh, he's a stud in real life, so that's not a bad pick at all. But I am curious to see if I could trade up to number four and potentially get like Capo Caco or something, because I think that would be pretty huge. Let's send the first pick and see who the Panthers go with, and they do end up with Hughes. So 81 overall, elite high. He's obviously going to be a stud of a player. And now Minnesota is going to pick Lowry, and yeah, look at that, 82 overall. So right now he is better than Hughes. Um, but his potential is medium, so obviously Hughes is the better pick, but still, that's going to be a stud in Lowry. Let's see who the Rangers go with. 
they go with Doc. So we do still have Kako Capo on the board. So I think I'm going to try and see if the Avs are willing to move that. I kind of I kind of figure that it's going to be hard to move them. Let's see if we can give up our first and then maybe throw a defenseman in there. I don't really want to trade any other picks because obviously we just started this franchise and we're going to need some depth. But look at all these defensemen that we have. So yeah, we can definitely afford to move a D-man. Um, I'm thinking maybe Alec Martinez. What does that put the trade value at? I think, yeah, that should go through. And we might even be able to get a pick off of them. So let's see if maybe we get their second rounder. I don't think this will go through. Oh, and it goes through. Okay, so that's awesome. So we move up to number four on the draft. We also get a second rounder from Colorado, and uh, we send them over our sixth, round, uh, sixth overall pick along with Alec Martinez. So that's a great trade for us for sure. And so I'm very happy to be selecting Capo Caco. That's awesome. Let's see what his overall is. 80 overall, medium elite. He's going to be a stud for sure. Uh, I don't know why the Rangers went with Doc. Kako was obviously the right pick. So thank you to them for not picking him, which is absolutely solid. Let's move on to round two. We're picking 35, and then we should have another pick with the Colorado second rounder we just traded for. So let's see who's on the board here. We've got... Victor Hadfield, don't have much scouting on him. Three years ETA, though, that's not bad. Um, two years ETA for this guy. Seventh D-man, though. Maybe B. Tracy. Two years ETA, similar to Marion Gabrick. I think we got to go with Braden Tracy here. Let's see what he ends up with. Nice. Wow, that's a great pick there. 65 overall, medium elite in the second round. That is a very nice pick. We'll sim over to our second pick and let's just take a look at who went after us because I think that might be the pick of the round. They got Raphael Lavoie, actually, that's a great pick. Um, Niels Hoglander's not bad. Medium Elite 65 overall, so there's another one on the board actually. Anybody else? Top 4 D man, that's pretty solid. Another Medium Elite, but I think we might have got uh, at least a top. Uh, Top two pick of uh, round two, which is solid, and we still have one more to make. I picked a lot of forwards already. Ooh, Connor McMichael is still on the board, though. Four years ETA. I'm not crazy about that. I wouldn't mind getting a D-man as well, since we've already picked two forwards. Four years ETA. Let's see, does he have any stats? We didn't scout him. Okay. Um, any other D-man? No, eh? Sogard. I wouldn't mind getting him. He's a massive goalie. I think it's a little bit early for me to draft a goalie, though. I think we got to go with Artemi. I'm not even try to pronounce that. I don't know how to say that name, but let's pick Artemi. And elite, elite medium, 61 overall. So, so far, it's been a very solid draft. Let's skip down to pick 67, so our third rounder. And I might look to draft a goalie here if there's anyone on the board. Let's just take a look. Anyone close by? There is one goalie here. We got Kerry Piranin. Six foot, four years ETA, which, I mean, that's kind of expected for a goalie. HL starter, though. Let's see. Elite goalie. A-plus competition. Three years ETA. Okay, we're going to try and take a chance on Yan Scorpik. All right. Cool name. Let's take a chance on him. Elite medium again. Okay. Solid, solid. I'll pick once more in the fourth round, and then I might sim the rest. I might take a look. Uh, possible elite D-man here. Three years ETA. Let's go. Oh, top four, though. I think we're going to go with Semin. What's his first name there? Kirill Semin. Let's give him a shot. Solid pick indeed. Elite medium, 62. This is looking like a pretty solid draft for us. I mean, it's they've all been like semi-accurate or inaccurate, so it's not for sure that they actually are elite medium, but I think uh, they've been solid picks so far. Nothing great on the board here. See if there's any like goalie steals or anything. We got an elite here. Hmm. 
right, we're going to take a chance here. And then I think we're going to sim through the rest of the draft. I don't really focus too much on my uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds. I don't really care about them that much. It's more the top four, four rounds that really you make the impact. So I'll sim through and I'll see you guys on the other side. So we have sim through into uh, the contract re-signing stage. And I did realize that the reason they were all saying medium elite was because I had the potential turned off. So the draft might not have gone as well as I had thought. So we're going to take a look back into what their actual uh, potentials are. So as you can see, Kapokako is uh, medium elite, which is very solid. Who else did we draft that was any good? We drafted Tracy in the second round, I believe. Yeah, that was our second rounder. He is a top six forward with medium potential. So that was actually a great pick. As for the rest of them, uh, we had another top six, low potential though. Oh, this wasn't one of our drafts this year actually. Um, who else did we draft? We drafted Semin, who was actually a seventh D-man, so nothing special there. We did draft uh, Artemi, I think that was our other second rounder, yep. And he has top four potential and medium elite, so that's a great pick as well. As for the rest of the draft, with our seventh rounder, we got a top four D-man. He's 49 overall. Uh, only 17, though, with top four potential. So that's pretty solid. Um, not as well as I thought while we were in the draft, but still a great draft. We got some depth and some prospects that we will hope to develop into some studs for the future. Right now, I am going to finish off uh, re-signing all these guys, and then we're going to end off the video by showing you guys our jerseys. All right, so we finished up the re-signing stage. We pretty much signed everybody uh, except for a few of the lower draft picks we uh, drafted we didn't end up signing them but basically our top four or five picks we signed and then everybody from the expansion draft we got back and we're now into the free agency stage of the game i don't think year one i'm going to sign any free agents i think i'm going to go ahead and sim right into the season and just see how our team does all right so we got our first trade offer Trevor Lewis and a fourth for our third. I don't think it's worth doing. I want to keep on or hold on to my draft picks right now, and uh, I don't think it, he's a player worth trading for. So we're just going to decline that offer, and we get another one. Derek Stepan for two second rounders. Once again, he's probably like an 83 overall player. I don't really care to trade two second rounders for him. We're in a rebuild year right now. Uh, I'm not going to try and push anything again. We're getting offers for. Kyle Palmer, Paul Mary, Jesus, I can't pronounce that, um, and two second rounders again. I'm going to edit our trade block so we stop getting these offers. Yeah, we've got all of our picks on the board, which I really don't want to get rid of, as I said. Take a look at Capo Caco. They're almost a full bar of trade value, which is just awesome to see. I might actually throw a few defensemen on the trade block, just taking a look now. We've got a lot of defensemen that can go. Uh, let's look at age here. Muzzin's 30. I think I'm actually going to put him on the block, even though he's our second best D-man. Who else? Uh, I want to hold on to Gustafson. Uh, and who else here? I'm going to put Niskin in as well. He's 32. So we'll just see what we get. I'm not really in a hurry to trade these guys. I kind of want to feel it out, see how the season goes. If uh, we need to make moves, I'll address them. I don't really expect to make the playoffs in year one here. But, because uh, I mean, look at our forward core. It's pretty bad. Perron's our best forward. So we might we might uh, make some forward moves before the season starts. But right now, I'm pretty content with what we have. Maybe if we get a trade offer for one of, for one of those D-man. Again, they're looking for our second rounder. I don't want to trade that. Same thing. We'll skip through and get to the season. Thomas Tatar for two... That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure how Tatar is in this game. Let's take a look here. 84 overall. Put up a decent amount of points last year. That's solid. And he's only 28. So that's actually not a terrible uh, trade at all. They want to give us Deloria as well. I really don't care for this player. Let's see if they'll get that deal done with a third rounder. Because again, I don't want to give up two second rounders. That's already a lot to give up. So let's see if they'll take a third rounder next year, just for Tatar straight up. Reject it. All right, we're going to move on then. I don't want to force anything. Uh, again, they're looking for our second rounders. Everybody wants us. 
they know that we're going to tank this season. Eberly, no. Once again. All right, I'm going to sim through and get to the start of the season so you guys don't need to see all these trade offers. So just to wrap up the video, we finally made it to the preseason now. Uh, I got about 20 of the same trade offers for the Devils while I was sim uh, simming, which is pretty annoying. But I'm glad we finally made it to the preseason. And just before we end it off, I want to show you guys our jerseys. So right here we have our away jerseys. Pretty nice green helmet, green pants. I'm not crazy about the jersey. Uh, there's a lot of white on it. I definitely could have done a better job, but I'm not very good at making jerseys. And I'm not super crazy about the aways. But the home are really the ones I love. I love that color scheme, blue helmet, blue pants, and then the green jersey. I think it looks really nice. Let me know what you guys think about these jerseys in the comments. And this is going to wrap up episode number one of the Seattle Kraken franchise mode. Episode two will be showing you the lines. And we're going to do some simming. Hopefully get through one season or at least to the trade deadline. So I hope to see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.